Keith Lockhart's tenure as conductor of the Boston Pops turns 21 tomorrow. Old enough to drink and old enough to bring in comedian, producer, actor Seth MacFarlane. If you don't know him, he's the man behind the great animated TV show Family Guy, which had a shout out of sorts for Lockhart's orchestra. Aren't you a little overdressed? Oh, well, actually, I'm just stopping off at Quagmire's. There's a benefit gala at the Boston Pops tonight, and, well, I'm, I'm trying to nail the flautist. <laughs> oh. oh, my. <laughs> Keith Lockhart joins me now. That clip, by the way, is from 17 years ago. I want to ask you if he succeeded. Nice to see you, Keith Lockhart. So tomorrow night's spring season I'll starts. I'll ask the flautist. Uh, Please yeah. do, and then get back to us. And we'll... So can we do bookends first, because I know what the answer is. What starts at tomorrow night, and what ends it, and then we can do the middle? We're starting with Seth MacFarlane and his first appearance with the Pops, and it'll hopefully go a little differently than Brian's date night did. And, and, and he's uh, a big... Singer, yes. He's a, he's a great singer. It's a part of Seth MacFarlane's talents that a lot of his most ardent supporters don't know about. He's a great singer. I mean, he sings all the voices in Family Guy, but on his own, even as Seth MacFarlane, he's a, it's a great voice, a great uh, affinity for the American song bo songbook. He's really kind of, he's Sinatra. And sold out in about a minute and a half. Uh, yeah, about that, yes. And exactly. what's ending the season? Uh, Brian Wilson uh, playing all of Pet Sounds, the entire album. Live with the Boston And Pops. a lot of critics think maybe the greatest album, or at least one of the greatest two or three albums really ever. Really seminal, made. iconic album. So we, uh, give us a, a sampling of what's in between, what's in the middle of the oh, deal. You know, everything Broadway, Mandy Patinkin, Sutton Love Foster, uh, a, a great Broadway survey sort of program from uh, films. Uh, John Williams joins us for film night along with me on the podium. We're also doing Raiders of the Lost Ark live uh, with live orchestra showing the complete film with that. Rock and Roll with Tom Scholz. Boston. Boston, yeah. Uh, puppets doing Peter and the Wolf from the University of Connecticut oh, Puppet man. Arts program. Pops on Demand, this cool thing where we let the audience use their smartphones. You started that last year, right? We did. Yeah, explain how that works for those who missed it. I love this. Well, we, you know, we're always anti-technology. We always tell people to put their cell phones away. I said, I wonder if there's a way of engaging an audience live in the, in the uh, event. Mm -hmm. And through polling software, we ask people to take their cell phones out. And basically what we do is we give them categories three choices within a category, your favorite classic rock moment, that sort of thing. And then they vote on them. We show the results live in a bar graph and they're all fighting, you know, and more people come in on another side and all that. And then the winner is announced and then we you play, play it? and we play that piece. So we have a, a folder this thick on stage of all the possibilities. Raise your right hand, tell me it's not fixed. Not fixed. It really it's really what they vote for is what you it play. It really is. That's unbelievable. One more thing before we get to some Mandy Patinkin, by the way, every, we know him from Homeland. And what he's a huge, huge musical star. Yes, I mean, well, those huge. were his, his first big things. The Tony Awards and things with that were for, were, were for being a, a, a musical theater star. Evita, yes, was yes, a Evita, big thing. And then Sunday in the Park with George from Sondheim in '85. And uh, it's uh, it's he's easy. singing in the background right now. Actually, <laughs> yes, he's a, he play, he was the big guest star for my. First concert with the Boston Pops for you as uh, my my twenty one years ago concert. How'd that come about? May of uh, ninety five. I had a long relationship with him. I did a lot of work with Mandy before I was ever at the Boston Pops. Well, it was great. You know, speaking of that, I, I heard that you celebrated uh, the four hundredth birthday of one of your closest friends. <laughs> he is one of my closest pretty friends. Wonderful I wish location. Where were you on the? I was 23rd? in Stratford upon Avon on April 23rd with the rest of the world. Well, doing that, actually. Doing some uh, some conducting for a concert for BBC Radio 3, tied in with the worldwide festivities for the 400th observance of the death of William Shakespeare. That is totally great. So you told us here a couple of months ago how you met Donald Trump once, and he blew you <laughs> oh, off. Oh, we're not going to go here. Is that, we? No, we're not going to go He blew you off, essentially, right? Yeah. It, you he just was, heard me he was dismissive, I He was would dismissive, say. Yes. yes. Did he know who you were? He knew you were, right? But he still well, was. he was introduced. We were introduced by a mutual friend who was somebody who uh, Donald would not have been dismissive of, but he just he was decided I wasn't worth talking to. But you know what just occurred to me? He, uh, start Me Up is what the, the Rolling Stone thing. They played the other night at his victory party, and mm -hmm. now the Rolling Stone said, don't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. Adele said it, Neil Young. R.E.M. has said, don't. Actually, R.E.M., it's the end of the world as we know it. Might be a good song. <laughs> I think of it. Has anyone ever said to you, don't play my music, Keith Lockhart? <laughs> no. No. Okay, then fine. Let's do this. Have you ever met the other candidate, Hillary Clinton? I have. And what's that about? Uh, I met her, great story, uh, Longfellow House in Cambridge, Cambridge the yeah. rededication of it, which must have been 15, 16 years ago. I was on the dais as one of the speakers talking about how that house served as a, as a centerpiece for art in the 19th century America. The other speakers on the program whom I had to follow mm -hmm. were Hillary Clinton, Robert Pinsky, and David McCullough. Oof. 
And then it was the, How'd that go? And then it was the music guy. I don't remember. <laughs> I was just so scared. Each one of them ramped it up. You know, Pinsky is so poetic, and Hillary is Poet so Laureate poised. For yes, those exactly. Who don't know. And and then and then it's like, and there's the music schmuck. Uh, so, <laughs> did she use that term? Or uh, no, no, she, no, no. She that was, I used that term. No, she, she was very gracious. Uh, I had only at that point met her. I didn't meet I didn't meet her husband until a couple of years ago when we did the big city year uh, event at City Hall. You know, I have to say, I, I, the spring, the season. Sounds, I don't know if you've ever even had one this diverse and wonderful, and hu it's huge. It's great. I hope you're as Thanks. excited as we are. You know, looking back at it, you know, it's my job to always say they're great, but I looked back at this one a couple of days ago and said, you know, we really hit all the bases here and in a really good way. I'm excited about the whole season. Hard to pick a favorite. Terrific. Keith Lockhart, good luck with it. Jim, it's always great a pleasure. to see you as always.